here's how Captain Steve on the Tail Chaser 2 has us rigged up. I mean, there's a lot of wind blowing from the west to the east, so it's blowing over the shore and pushing us out to sea, and we're moving pretty fast. So we're using an eight ounce sinker today, and even at that, it's kind of hard to hold the bottom, so it makes it harder to feel the fish, but that notwithstanding, we've still been catching a lot of fish. And then what we'll do here is we will put a squid strip right on the hook there. First, just about that much so that there's not too much here so it doesn't helicopter in the water. And then uh, Captain Steve's technique is to use a spearing. That's this fish. And right under the, between the gill plates there and up through the head and then pull it all down tight and there you go, that's your rig, your flounder. The squid is an attractant and the bait fish is the definitely uh, something that they love to eat. More fish? Hey. Oh, it's a sea robin, dude, you caught your first sea robin. Nice, huh? That's a nice one too. So we move spots. We're on a little upwelling from the seafloor, a little mountain. And looks like we have the first fish on in this new spot. Don't see any color yet. You can definitely feel them on there, though, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're doing good with that rock. You got that thing under your armpit, and your armpit's going to be sure tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, I see color now. Thank you. What the heck? Oh my gosh! That is the biggest sea robin I ever saw in my life. Never have I seen a sea robin that size. Oh, cow. Wow. Okay, so, yeah, this is a sea robin. This sea robin doesn't have any teeth. He's not like an oyster cracker or even a flounder, right? He's a he's an opportunist. He'll come and he'll take any bait. This is a big one though. I haven't seen one this big since I was 50 years ago fishing with my grandfather in Hobart Bay. Again, take a look at his legs here. Yep, take a look at his legs. You crawl around on the seafloor with those things. Doesn't take much. He's got two beautiful fillets right down here. Most people say they're junk fish, but I've eaten these. They're delicious. I would eat this one, except we're gonna keep it for bait. The two fillets make nice white meat, but you call us a sea robin because look at these fins. He, he swims along the sea like that. Yeah, you Sushi, want to eat it raw? Here's my buddy. Then you, be a sea robin. Then, you be, then you be a sea robin. Now we have a bycatch of sea robins. We use some for bait. Captain Steve offered to clean them, so I'll be like, okay, sure, why not? Uh, but yeah, look, he's going to get little fillets off of these. I'm going to take these home and eat them because I was taught to do that by some old wise fishermen out of Philadelphia. Easy enough. All you're doing is just taking the two fillets right off the That's side, it. going down along the backbone, right? That's it. Okay. Cool. Cutting it right behind the fin. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get that in the pan. A little bit of flour going with some herbal seasoning. And uh, get some taters and tomatoes. It's gonna be good. Okay, so we're gonna finish this up. You got to see the dock cleaning of the sea robins. They're delicious. We're gonna make some of these for supper. 
Here are the fillets, as you can see. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you how we do it. And uh, I think it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so what do we have there? Some, some flour, flour and some, what's that stuff? Lemon pepper. Lemon pepper, okay. Ah. McCormick's lemon pepper, easy enough to find. Old Bay, that's what's going in next. A little bit of Old Bay, that's easy to find. Oh, that's, that's not a little, that was a fair amount of Old Bay. And then we had the dog come and get his little sniff of the C. Robbins. And what's that that you have right there? This is blackened fish. Oh, a blackened fish seasoning, okay. Good, put some of that in there. So if you like things more spicy, you would put more of those spices in there. Okay, show us the procedure. Kind of just dredging it. No egg, again, we don't use egg. Don't need that extra egg. If you like egg, use it with, you know. And you put them right here. You're gonna get those all prepared, and then we're gonna do what? Put them in a frying pan next. Okay. So let's get them in the frying pan. I often say that in the olden days, like my grandmother, grandfather would have cooked this in a cast iron skillet, but this isn't the olden days. Now we have modern non-stick technology. Some people would argue that cooking over gas with a cast iron skillet, still, skillet is still the best way to do it. But you know, this is more convenient for us. You do it the way you want. Look, it all fits in there nice. That's a meal for you and me, right? Awesome. Time for flipping. So only a couple minutes on each side because these aren't big chunky pieces of fish. Look at how nice and golden brown they look. Mm -mm, they smell fantastic. I am so glad that my son and my grandson were out there catching these fish so I can eat them. Some of you have seen me make this on other videos. This is because it is my favorite dipping sauce, or as the French would call it, a remoulade. A remoulade. Now I'm going to make out of some hot sauce, which is basically Frank's style hot sauce. I got this bottle at Lidl though, at the Lidl store. Uh, some lemon juice and some Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. I think it's important to use Hellman's. I think it tastes the best. So first we'll put a little Hel Hellman's in here. And Okay, that's good. And we'll put a bit of hot sauce in there. Eh, maybe a bit more, depending on your flavor and your taste. And then we'll put some lemon juice in here. And the lemon juice is gonna have a tendency to curdle the ingredients of the mayonnaise, but only for a little bit. If you keep stirring it up, It'll blend together really nicely and become a very smooth remoulade or dipping sauce. And for me, it is the perfect dipping sauce for this kind of fish. I use it for blowfish. I use it for any kind of fried fish, to tell you the truth, even fish and chips, which is basically what this is, fish and chips. But this happens to be sea robin. We didn't cook up the flounder because we figured most people understand and have cooked flounder already that are watching this. If not, you can do the same thing, same steps, same breading, same remoulade. There you go, that's done. Just that simple, and it is delicious. All that remains is to go ahead and give it a taste. Well, here we are. I think this is the perfect ending to almost any fishing adventure if you like to catch and keep some of the stuff and go ahead and eat it. So this is the sea robin, fried up nice and brown. I'm gonna cut a little piece. I'm gonna put it into my remoulade dipping sauce. Oh boy. Oh man, it is so good. It's not a junk fish. Sea robin. Next time you catch a nice size one, try this. Don't throw it out. Don't use it just for bait, although you could. Cook some up and enjoy it. And I'll guarantee you, whenever you're out there, if you catch a big sea robin, you're going to keep it for table fare. So, until next time, this is Dave Klein for Raptor Adventures, saying tight lines and bon appetit.